Alright, so in this video, I'm going to cover three main event systems that you will want to know how to use when making games with Unity. It will help make uh, your game development journey much easier, it will help keep things clean, your code much easier to work with. So to get started, here I have Vinny, and he's out collecting wood for, to, for his house. And the problem right now, his axe doesn't work, as you can see that Whenever I'm trying to break down a tree, it doesn't work. At a visual perspective, I'd want the axe to run its functionality of breaking trees at the peak of its swing. So right at the bottom, like at the, like, there. Um, like at the peak of its swing, like right here. This is where I want the functionality to do. So I could time it using an IE enumerator, but instead of doing that, we can use an animation event. And the option is right over here, add event. If you click on that, it will create a flag that you can use to tie a function to this event. So when the animation is playing and it passes and it passes this keyframe, it's going to run any function that is on this event. For me, it's the swing logics. And if I go into um, the axe tool class here, the swing logic just says swing brave, and it creates a ray from the player's camera that that starts with the player camera and it goes at the forward vector of the player camera and it shoots a ray cast uh, with a range and if the hit object that is collected from the ray is named tree it will destroy the tree ray it will add a random uh, value of around two to four to the wood count and it will display the wood count to the text at the top left here so now that I have the animation event hooked up I can now hit play and if I swing at a tree you'll notice that the trees will break and you can see my wood count rising one thing about animation events is that any functions that you want uh, the animation to access has to be in a class within the same game object as the animator and the function also has to be public so as you can see here I have the animator here and if I go into this animation controller asset you'll see that it has the axe swing um, animation and since uh, the animator is in the same game object as my axe tool class the animator can read off of the swing logic function and be able to put it into the animation event and now that is all set up Vinny can now break logs to get materials for his home Alright, and now Vinny can go home. Alright, so to demonstrate Unity events, here I have Vinny once again, and he's trying to get to his house, which is on the other side of this gate. And the only way for him to get through the gate is for him to push these buttons. But the problem with these buttons is that they don't really do much. All they do is just debug.log toggle door. And what we're going to do is use Unity events so we can disable this door and when he reaches the other side he can press this button to re-enable this door so to do that we go back into uh, our class here and what we do is do public unity event and if you press alt other control here it says using unity engine dot events so move that over here and call this our door event or button event button event and whenever the button's pressed, instead of debug logging toggle door, what we can do is do button event dot invoke and put a question mark. It's like an if statement. The question mark here, what it does is checks if there are any listeners on the event before invoking it. So now if we go back into Unity and we go to our buttons here, you'll notice that we now have this a really cool looking list here and if we hit the plus sign it's like the event system that you'd see uh, on a button so it takes in an object so what I want this to influence is our gate here this gate here so if I lock the inspector and drag this gate over here and I click on no function you'll see uh, all the functions that can be accessed within the unity event uh, like uh, component wise so on the game object itself you can see the set active and this is what we want to use so I click on set active 
and you'll see the bool here and I want it to disable the gate so I just leave it as false. Alright and now if I go to the button on the other side of the gate I want this to re-enable the gate so I just unlock my inspector here and I click on this button click on the plus sign and assign the gate into our object field here go to no function game object set active and put it to true there you go and now if I hit play and I go to my button oh, there you go go to my button I press E on it you notice the gate will open and if I press E on this button it will close and now Vinny can go into his very cool house alright and for C sharp events here I have a random number generator example so here is a grid of boxes and all these boxes have a text element on them as you can see and if you go into the number box class here you'll see that in this function here the generate number uh, it will set the text that is on the box to a random number and I don't want to run this function every frame because uh, let's say this function is is not performant this function is uh, is not optimized and that is why I do not want to run it every frame just just saying all right just for an example so, and what I want to do is use a tick system so it doesn't have to run every frame and I get to save on some performance so here's the tick system class it, it's very simple all it does is it just subtracts for our time before tick by delta time and if it's less than zero less or e than or equal to zero it will uh, reset it and rinse and repeat so what I want it to do whenever the time before tick is less than or equal to zero I want to run all of the functions on these number boxes and to do that I'm going to use a C sharp event so above my variable here in the tick system above my variables here in the tick system I'm going to first create a public delegate void and call this tick and underneath our delegate void here we're going to do is a public static event and we're making the uh, event here a public static so we can access this across the entire scene and we do not need a reference to our tick system so public static event of tick and call this on tick and with this on tick we can go into our number box class and in the start method after we initialize the variables what we can do is reference our on tick event so we can do tick system dot on tick you can uh, see uh, that it is an event by seeing this little lightning bolt here so dot on tick and to add an event to uh, an event handler here what you do is do plus equals like a math operator and put in the function you want so I want to add in generate number and there you go and to actually run our event here we we just take our on tick and in the spot where I want the event handler to run I put on tick dot invoke and now if I go back into unity go to my main here and I set up my ticks per second which is at one which is where I want it to be and I hit play you notice that every second the boxes will generate a random number and it will display it now why would you want to use the C sharp event over the unity event they're fairly similar but one big reason is optimization and according to a blog post from someone who kind of analyzed the performance between C sharp events and Unity events, there is a drastic speed a difference uh, when comparing C sharp events and Unity events. C sharp events are much quicker than Unity events in general. And I would normally use C sharp events to run any sort of function that I want to ha uh, that I want to be completed after a certain task is completed. Like for example, in a wave system whenever the intermission uh, is over you may want to run an event that is like on intermission over to uh, run any functions or effects that you want to play this is all I have for this video uh, hopefully you learned something new about animation events uh, unity events and C sharp events and I'll see you in the next video goodbye